1-800-222-8840, Red Rock Financial Services versus Nona Tobin. I note that Ms. Tobin is here. Ms. Tobin, are you here? Ms. Tobin, you're on mute. Are you here? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yes, now I can hear you. All right, and in my courtroom, I have uh, Carrie Fonnen. Um, Mr. Scow is on the line, it looks like, and I also have Vanessa Turley with Nation Star Mortgage. All right, we have a bunch of motions and oppositions today. As a preliminary matter, Your yes. Honor, as we discussed, um, Mr. Scow has a family issue. Um, he will be listening in, but I will be arguing okay. on behalf of uh, Red Rock today. All right, great. Um, all right, we have, let me get to all of these. We have Ms. Tobin's pro se amend, second amended motion for an order to distribute interplead funds with interest to sole claimant Nona Tobin and motion for attorney's fees and costs pursuant to NRS 18010 and EDCR 7.60 and motion to correct non-pro-tunk notices of entry of orders entered on November 30th, 2021 and May 25th, 2022. We have Red Rock Financial Services opposition to Nona Toba's second amended motion for an order to distribute interpled funds with interest to sole claimant and motion for attorney's fees and costs and um, a renewed counter motion for abuse of process for a restrictive order against Nona Tobin and for attorney's fees and costs. And then we have the response from Ms. Tobin to what she calls non-party Red Rock Financial Services counter motion for a restrictive vexatious litigant order against Nona Tobin and motion for attorney's fees and costs. And Nona Tobin's counter motion to adopt Tobin's proposed final judgment order. Um, let me just ask at the outset, has everybody had the opportunity to read the Court of Appeals decision that just came out on Tobin versus Chessie? Uh, Your Honor, yes, that was one of the things we were going to uh, just in, uh, uh, I read inform it. that the court that had, we did file a notice, we <laughs> just wanted to make sure the court had seen our notice that there was an appellate decision. I saw the appellate decision, I read them every single day, so and, and I saw the appellate decision before um, before I even got your all's notice. Um, we have reviewed it as well. Ms. Tobin, did you And yes, Your Honor, Nation Star. Oh, I'm sorry. Ms. Tobin, did you have an opportunity to read the Court of Appeals decision in the Tobin versus Chiesi matter? Yes, I I did. Okay. And I, well, I, served, I served last night on, um, the parties to that appeal, a notice of a um, petition to rehear. Okay, that's fine. But until it's reheard, that that decision is binding. So, um, on this court, all right. Um, it's your uh, it's your motion, Miss Tobin. So I'll allow you to argue it. The court has read and reviewed everything, though. So, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I'll, I'll synopsize the motions and my um, issue with the oppositions. Okay, so on May 30th, I filed my second amended motion for the proteins. As my previous motions had not been heard or decided, this motion was for about 57,000 in undistributed proceeds plus about 90,000 in interest and penalties of about 30,000 in fees and costs as a penalty for having to defend against this unwarranted interpleader action after my two previous civil claims for the proceeds as the sole claimant have been obstructed and never heard. The total's around 175,000. This motion was supported by 50 exhibits that show that Nation Star is judicially stopped from claiming that it or Wells Fargo was ever a beneficiary of the deed of trust that was extinguished by the HOA sale. And therefore, neither has standing to file a claim for the proceeds or to oppose their distribution to me with interest and penalties as the sole claimant. Also on May 30th, I filed a second completely unrelated motion that was supported by three exhibits, 
which was to correct the three orders that were entered on November 30th, 2021, and on May 25th, 2022, to correct the party identification and to add as exhibits my competing orders that should have been attached when the notices of entry were filed on those two dates. The court must grant this motion as unopposed and as the court record is inaccurate without my opposition being included as it makes it appear as though the findings of fact and conclusions of law were uncontested, which is absolutely false. None of the parties, the actual parties, Red Rock, Public Services, me as the trustee, Nation Star, or Wells Fargo filed any opposition to my Nona Tobin and individual May 30th motions for the court to grant me about 175000 meaning it was uncontested that I as the sole claimant get 100% of the interpleader proceeds, eight years of interest at the Nevada legal interest rate and 30000 in attorney's fees and costs. However, non-party Red Rock Financial Services LLC filed on June 13th an opposition to the distribution of the proceeds plus interest and penalties to me as the sole claimant, despite the fact that as a non-party it has no standing to file into this case, and as an entity with no interest in the interpleader subject of this case, it has no standing to oppose the court distributing the proceeds in the manner prescribed by law, or to oppose an otherwise unopposed motion. Non-party LLC, uh, Red Rock LLC, is not prejudiced in any way by the actions of the court in this matter. Further, on June 13th, non-party Red Rock LLC opposed my motion to correct the record by including my competing orders and to correctly identify the parties in the caption, specifically identifying that Red Rock LLC was not a party and never has been a party, and therefore it's outside this court's jurisdiction to accept, consider, or pro provide requested relief to a non-party. This court must strike this non-party's opposition as it is rogue and was filed by a non-party who is not prejudiced in any way by my motion to correct the record and has no standing to act or, or argue on behalf of a party. Also on June 13th, non-party Red Rock LLC did not stop there. Non-party Red Rock LLC filed a counter motion for abuse of process and for a restrictive vexatious order against me and my filing my legitimate claims against the actual parties to this litigation. And non-party LLC also filed a motion for attorney fees and costs without citing any legal authority for it and without having any actual attorney's fees and costs in this case or in any other case related to this dispute as Red Rock LLC has never been a party in any of these related deals. On June 21st, I filed a um, reply to non-party LLC's opposition that included a proposed order granting my unopposed motion for the interpleaded proceeds plus eight years interest and 30,000 in attorney's fees. On June 22nd, I filed a reply uh, non-party Red Rock LLC's opposition to my motion to correct the party identification and attach my competing orders, that this contained the exact corrections to the orders I was moving the court to approve, as well as providing the court with a proposed order to grant my motion to correct those three orders. On June 27th, I filed a counter motion to non-party LLC, uh, Red Rock LLC's repeated harassing rogue counter motions for abusive process and for a restrictive vexatious litigant order and its motion for its non-existent non-party attorney fees and costs. This counter motion was simple for the court. In its entirety, the, the final judgment order I proposed and, and the terms of those are explicitly listed on page to 18 of the June 27th panel motion. And I would like to read the specific of the proposed order into the court record 
So the court doesn't have to search for the specific pages, and so the record will be complete in the transcript. It is ordered a judgment decreed that non-party Red Rock LLC's unauthorized motions, charges, propositions, and oral arguments be stricken from the court record as void and rogue, and that all orders emanating from non-party Red Rock LLC's motions be set aside as they were issued outside this court. It is ordered a judge and a decreed that Nona Tobin's motion for summary judgment against counter defender Red Rock Financial Services, a partnership, is granted. It is further ordered, judge, and decreed that plaintiff Red Rock Financial Services, a partnership, or Stephen Scow personally, if the Red Rock partnership has ceased to legally exist, are hereby ordered to pay Nona Tobin $57,282.32 undistributed excess proceeds from the August 15, 2014 sale, plus $86,799.03 for eight years' interest at the Nevada legal interest rate, and special damages of $30,974.50 for her attorney's fees and costs within, in this interpleader case within 10 days of notice of entry of this order. It is further ordered, adjudged, and decreed that Red Rock Financial Services Partnership or Red Rock or Stephen Scow, if the Red Rock Partnership has ceased to legally exist, are ordered to pay Nona Tobin $810,000 in actual damages caused by their intentional acts prohibited by NRS 207.360 Prince 30, presenting false evidence. NRS 205.377, multiple corrupt transactions. And NRS 205.405, falsifying accounts. And NRC 60B3 and D3, fraud and fraud on the court. And 2,430,000 for treble damages pursuant to NRS 207.7470, Prince 1 and Prince 4, civil damages from racketeering. And to Ms. Tobin. NRS 42. Ms. Tobin? Yes. Ms. Tobin? Yes. Did you read yes. the case, Tobin versus Chiesi, that was just ordered by the Court of Appeals? Did you read the decision? I did. Great. I then did. All of what you just said is without merit based on that decision. Everything that you just said that you want placed in the order is 100% without merit. There is no, all of your complaints, your first complaint, your second complaint, They've all been dismissed, and the Court of Appeals found that that was appropriate. You have no claims against Mr. Scow. You have no claims. The only thing that is open and available right now, and this is what I told you at the last hearing, is the Red Rock Financial Services versus Nona Tobin case, which is the interpleader case. That is the only thing that is open. And to the extent that you are asking this court to correct orders that it issued, the court read your competing order. The court read the order that was submitted by the plaintiff in this matter. The court read both of the orders and found that the order that was submitted by the plaintiff was accurate and represented what the court ordered. Your, your proposed order was not an order. Your proposed order included arguments in the findings of fact that were solely your, your arguments and not what this court found, which is the reason why this court did not sign your competing order because it wasn't an order. It did not represent what this court found. So to the extent that you're asking for this court to issue a nunc pro tunc order to, to include your competing order, your competing order 
is not appropriate because that is not what the court found and that's why the court did not sign your order as far as you asking for all of these additional damages and interest and attorney's fees that is not appropriate and not before this court what is before this court and what this court has told you time and time and time again is that there is an interpleader action for the excess funds that is all everything else has already been decided by the court of appeals in the other case and they have said that everything the foreclosure was done properly so all of these things that you are trying to say that these parties are liable for are belied by the order that was just entered by the court of appeals so your honor please stop asking this court to do something that is not within its purview to do now that the Court of Appeals has spoken. The only thing that is before this court is the interpleader action. I've already, already dismissed and it's already been found to be appropriate in the other cases. So if it was appropriate in the other cases that the Court of Appeals already found that your actions in the other cases were barred, then it's similarly barred in this case. There is no conspiracy. There was no wrongful foreclosure. There is no fraudulent actions. The only thing that we are dealing with is the interpled funds. So, so Your Honor, um, what, are, what is your intention? My intention is to order the Red Rock Financial Services, which Red Rock Financial Services is an agent of the HOA. And so they are a party. And Your Honor, if I can be clear to yes. you on this one point. Red Rock LLC is not a party. Never has been. Has never been a party. Never. Honor, Red Rock LLC Ms. Tobin, please stop is speaking. not a party. Ms. Tobin, please stop speaking. It's Mr. Fawnen's turn. Just for a point of clarity, Your Honor, on this one point, and then I'll let yes. the court. Uh, uh, LLC is limited liability. Right. Red Rock is a Delaware limited, limited liability, liability company. company. Correct. Clearly, Red Rock LLC is a party and is an entity that is appropriate here. With that, I will just let her. I finish I agree that. with you. I agree with you. So, Your Honor, I in my. Your Honor, may I explain? And Your Honor, I reserve the right to end, to respond. You can say whatever you want, but I agree with Mr. Fawnen. Red Rock LLC is a limited liability company out of Delaware that's operating here in the state of Nevada. They are serving as the agent for the HOA, correct? That is correct. Your and the reason that they filed this lawsuit was because they are the ones that are in a receipt of the funds. So therefore, if you are going to file something in this lawsuit, any response that they file is appropriate. Excuse me, Your Honor, but it is not true that Ms. Red Tobin, Rock LLC Ms. was Tobin, an agent. the court has made its ruling. Your Honor. Okay, it's just not true. Your Honor, if I could, if I could respond. I, sure. I didn't know if she's done, but I'd like an opportunity to respond in full, if I may, if, unless you want me to wait until she's had. Well, as far as, I mean, I, I'm just saying, as far as Red Rock <clears throat> Financial Services, Red Rock Financial Services, is the plaintiff in this matter and Red Rock Financial Services is therefore allowed to file pleadings in this matter. So I've made my ruling Honor, on that, Ms. Tobin. So if you have anything to no, I've made my ruling on that. So if you have anything to add other than on that issue, okay. you may continue. But okay. I don't want you to go I over to anything that, that, that the Court of Appeals has already ruled on. So to the extent that the Court of Appeals has already found that the foreclosure was proper, that, that there was nothing that was done that was wrong, um, that you were a party in privity with the Hanson Trust, that um, Red Rock Financial was a party in privity with the HOA, that 
Um, therefore, everything is appropriate, and, and the only thing that we're left with is the, interple is the interpled funds. Anything else that is outside of what, this, what the Court of Appeals has already decided, I don't want you to address, because this court is bound by that decision that was made by the Court of Appeals. So if you have anything to add other than that, then I will gladly listen to what you have to say. Okay. In the document that I filed on June 27th, I um, have in the end note, which is page 19, and it shows that Red Rock, a partnership, was the agent of the HOA. And on the second page, Red Rock LLC, which is a Delaware corporation, has never been on contract with the HOA, has never been a party to any litigation in any of the related disputes. Red Rock LLC is a separate and distinct legal entity, just as I am a separate and distinct legal entity as an individual from being a trustee of the trust that owned the property at the time of the sale. Two completely different parties I am, and I'm two completely different parties in the caption on this litigation. And they are in privity okay. with each other as decided by the Court of Appeals. Okay, that's fine. I understand what you're saying. I disagree, but that's to deal with specifically with the interplea. In that Court of Appeals case, and the reason I've requested a rehearing is because that privity argument does not deal with the issue that I have been the sole claimant for those, um, inter those um, proceeds since 2014 and that Stephen Scow has personally, without any legal authority, retained those funds in an unknown, unauthorized, unaudited account for eight years with no authority. It's usurping the authority of the HOA that is specifically prohibited by the HOA bylaws and is specifically prohibited by NRS 113-31164-3C of 2013, which required the person conducting the sale to interplead those proceeds after the sale. They did not do it. Well, Red Rock, the partnership, Red Rock put it in a check and told, instructed Stephen Scow on August 28, 2014, to deposit that check, remit that check to the Clark County District Court, which was the payee on the check. Stephen Scow did not do that. Stephen Scow put the money somewhere, nobody knows where, and kept it for eight years, in spite of the fact that I filed a claim for those proceeds on January 31st, 17 in the first civil action. That was dismissed without prejudice to go to mediation. I went to mediation and Stephen Scow was there representing the LLC, representing the partnership, representing, not the HOA, but representing the first, uh, uh, the first service residential, which is the parent company of uh, Red Rock Financial, the partnership. And Stephen Scow told me then that he had, he had those proceeds and he wasn't going to hand them over until the litigation was done which he had no legal authority to do that. The law says it had to be distributed after the sale, but he didn't do it. And so I couldn't, in the first action, get those proceeds because I couldn't get them returned to the court's jurisdiction, my claim for the proceeds, because the misrepresentations of opposing party, the fraud on the court that occurred in the first proceedings prevented my from putting my putting my claim for the proceeds back there. So I filed a second action. And in that second action, 
I filed a claim for those proceeds. I was still the only one claiming those proceeds. And what the um, Court of Appeals just did, and you just read that opinion, was they said because of the privity nonsense that this, this um, that he doesn't have to distribute them. That my claim for you're breaking up, Miss Tobin. Miss Tobin, Excuse you're breaking up. I'm getting the other word. Um, doesn't. Ms. Tobin, you're having bad reception. I'm getting every other word. I can't hear you. Ms. Tobin, if you're still there, I can't hear anything that you're saying. You have no reception. Ms. Tobin, if you're still there, you're going to need to sign. Yeah. Wait for her to sign back on. Give her 15 minutes to sign back on. If she doesn't, then I'm going to continue the hearing. Okay. I, and, Your Honor, I think my focus, based on Your Honor's comments so far, is going to be very uh, limited. Because I understand your, your staff probably wants to go to lunch at some point. You understand me correctly. I'm sorry, what was that? You That's understand correct. correctly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pause the session until That's fine. she comes back on. 